Section 2.4, the complex number system. Um, the complex number system is a number system similar to the real number system, but it allows us to take the square root of negative numbers. The imaginary unit i, which is a major part of the complex number system, is defined to be i equals the square root of negative 1. We're going to use this imaginary unit i along with the multiplication property of radicals to do this work that we'd like to do. Um, now, the square root version of this property is the square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. So, for example, if we had the square root of 18, well, that's going to be square root of 9 times 2. And that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And so we give 3 square root of 2. Okay. Now, if you want to take what's called the roots of negative numbers or the square roots of negative numbers, it's going to be very, very similar. So if I had the square root of negative 9, well, that's going to be 9 times negative 1 under the square root radical, which is the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1, which is 3i. Now, if it's not a perfect square root, it's just a little bit more work. So say if we had the square root of negative 300, well, that's going to be 300 times negative 1, okay? But 300 is not a perfect square root, but its largest perfect square root factor is 100. So we break that up that way. And then you can use the multiplication property. You get square root of 100, square root of 3, square root of negative 1, and you can reorder those in any way you want to. So 10i square root of 3. Okay, now the set of complex numbers is the set of all numbers that can be written as a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. a is called the real part, and b is called the imaginary part. So if I had 2 plus 5i, well, this is a complex number in standard form. 2 is your real part, and 5 is your imaginary part. Now, sometimes the real part is 0. So if we have the number 18i, well, that's really 0 plus 18i. So your real part is 0, and 18 is your imaginary part. Now, let's take a real number like 25. Well, we could write 25 as 25 plus 0 times i, which means 25 is also a complex number. In fact, all real numbers are complex numbers. Complex number system is larger in reality than the real number system, which is kind of interesting. But that means that a lot of our operations are going to be very similar to what we're used to. Say, for example, the um, addition and subtraction. Now, this whole ugly little fairy thing right here, <laughs> all this means is that if you're adding and subtracting complex numbers, then you're going to add and subtract the real part, and then add and subtract the complex part. So, for example, if I had say 3 minus 6i minus, in parentheses, 7 plus 2i. Well, take away the parentheses. should put my equal sign up there. Minus 7 minus 2i, because we do still distribute the negative through the set parentheses. Now, if you want to put your real parts together and your little imaginary pieces together, you may do so. It's not really necessary. And you get negative 4 minus 8i. Now, with multiplication, we have to use the fact that i squared is equal to negative 1, along with the distributive property and or FOIL. So, for example, if I had 2i times 5 minus 13i, then I'm going to distribute 2i times 5 minus 2i times 13i, and so I get 10i minus 26i squared, 
and then that's 10i minus 26 times negative 1. And then to write this answer in standard form, we have to reverse. We always put the imaginary part on the end. Okay. Now, say if we had a foil. Say we had, for example, 4 minus i times 3 plus 10i. Okay, well to fold this out, we're going to get 4 times 3, and then 4 times 10i, and then minus i times 3, and minus i times 10i, and then we get 12 plus 40i minus 3i minus 10i squared. So that would give you 12 plus 37i minus 10 times negative 1. And then finally, that would give you 22 plus 37i. Now, the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. So you change the sign in front of the imaginary part. So, for example, if you have, oh, say 7 plus 3i, its complex conjugate cc is 7 minus 3i. Now, be careful. If you have, say, for example, um, negative 2i, then its complex conjugate is positive 2i. Now, we use complex conjugates to divide with complex numbers. So if you have division with complex numbers, you're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the bottom. That's the shorthand way of saying you multiply the top, the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so for example, if I have, say, 4 over 1 minus i, well, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator, okay, which is 1 plus i. Now, since my original numerator was a real number, I am not going to multiply that out yet. I have hopes to be able to cancel. Now the denominator I'll full out, so I get 1 plus i minus i minus i squared. So I have 4 plus 1 plus i on the numerator, and I'm going to have 1 minus negative 1 in the denominator, and yes, I have where I'm going to be able to cancel. So I will cancel out that, and that's going to give me a 2, and so I get 2 times 1 plus i, which is 2 plus 2i in standard form. Okay, now sometimes you're going to have a complex number in the numerator also. So if this happens, then you're going to multiply once again by the complex conjugate of the denominator, but this time you'll just need to go ahead and multiply the numerator out also. So you're going to get 1, um, you're going to get minus i plus 3i minus 3i squared over 1 plus i minus i minus i squared, and that's going to give you 1 plus 2i minus 3 times negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1 again. And so you're going to get 4 plus 2i over 2. And what I would do in this case is I would break it up. And so I get 2 plus i as an answer. The end.